Welcome back everyone to another video in our construction engineering course. In this video, we are going to learn about how to develop a project schedule. In our last lecture, we learned what is the different relation between activities and what do we mean by sequencing activities. In this lecture, we will learn how to develop a project schedule. There are three different ways to develop a project schedule. First is Gantt chart. Second is using schedule software such as Primavera or MS project. And third method is critical path method. Gantt chart is a visual representation method to show the project's activities in a simple bar format and to show the relation between activities and it is mainly used in summarized progress reports to show the status of the project and to present it in a high level format. The second method we will learn for scheduling today is the critical path method. And this method is divided into two main types. First one is activities in arrows. And in this method, the arrows represent activities while the nodes represent events or specific points of time. And the second method is activities on nodes. And in this method, the nodes represent activities while the arrows shows the relation between those activities. And this method is the more commonly used one. Here we can see a sample for activities on arrows scheduling for a construction project. We can see that all arrows show a specific activity, including its duration in months, while each node represents a specific point of time. So for example, the point 1 represents the start of the project, and we can see that the activity between 1 and 2 is the design works, and it consumes 2 months. Following to the design works come two activities which could be carried out in parallel and they have no relation between each other, which are substructure works and interior design. We can see that substructure works will take two months while interior design will also take two months. But there is another activity which is going to be carried out after substructure works, which is superstructure works, which will take four months. So now we can see that activity four to six can only start based on finalizing both activities 3 to 4 and 2 to 4 because you cannot start first layer of finishing unless you have finalized the full structure works and the interior design works but we can see that both of the activities of the substructure works and superstructure works will consume 6 months together while the interior design will consume only 2 months so this means that the interior design is not a critical activity because it could be delayed up to four months without affecting the overall schedule because finishing works cannot start anyway unless the substructure and superstructure are finished which will consume six months together after that we have two parallel activities which are first layer of finishing works which will consume two months and selecting paint color by the client which is estimated to take one month again we can notice the same here as selecting the paint color is not critical as it could be delayed another month without affecting the overall schedule. But we can notice here that the last activity, which is paint works, relies on both of the finishing works and selecting paint color activities. That's why we add a dummy activity here. And this is not a real activity. However, it is added only to show the dependency of those activities on each other. So now we can calculate the overall critical path of the project, which is going to be design works, substructure works, superstructure works, finishing works, and paint works. And the total duration of this path is going to be 2 plus 2 plus 4 plus 2 plus 3, which is going to be 13 months. Now we will learn the other method of scheduling, which is activities on nodes. And in this method, the activities are shown in nodes which will look as shown here and it is going to have the following data first is the activity name which shall be in the center of this node then starting from the top left corner ES which stands for early start and this is the earliest possible time for the activity to start then D which stands for duration which is the estimated duration for this activity then EF which stands for early finish which is the earliest possible time for this activity to finish 
and it equals the early start plus the duration. In the bottom left corner, there is LS, which stands for late start, and it is the latest time for this activity to start without affecting the overall schedule. And it is going to equal the early start in case of critical activities, and it is going to equal early start plus float in case of activities which are not on a critical path. Then F, which stands for the float, which is the total duration for this activity that it could be delayed without affecting the overall schedule. And finally, LF, which stands for late finish, and it is the latest date for this activity to finish without affecting the overall schedule. And it equals the latest start plus the duration, and it is going to be the same as the early finish in case of critical activities when the float equals zero. I know that this might seem confusing first, but you will see how simple it is once we start solving an example. Now let's have this example. We have this table here that shows a list of activities including their durations and their dependencies. And you are required to determine the critical path and the project's overall duration and the float for each activity. So let's start first by plotting the activities and their dependencies. We always have first the start point at any project, and after that, we can see that we have three activities that depend on the start of the project only, which are activity A, B, and C. So let's start by plotting those three activities here. After that, we have activity D, which depends on activity A only, so let's plot it here. Then we have activity E, which depends on both activity A and B, so let's plot it here. And we have activity F that depends on activity C, so we will add it here. And activity G depends on activity D, so it comes here. And finally activity H that depends on D and E, so we will plot it here. And of course, at the end, we always have the end point of the project that is connected with the latest activities. So now we are done with drawing the activities and their relation to each other. Now we want to start calculating the duration and the start and finish date of each activity. First, let's add the duration of all activities. We know that the duration is in the middle top box, so here they are. Now we can start calculating the start and the end date of each activity. First we have activity A. It depends on the start only. So the early start is going to be zero, and it has duration of five days. So the early finish date is going to be five. The same with B, it depends on the start only, so it has early start date of zero, and it has duration of four days, so the early finish date is four. Also for activity C, it has early start date of zero, duration of three, so it has early finish date of three. The next step, would be activity D, it depends on activity A, so the early start of D would be the early finish of A, which is going to be 5, and it has duration of 3, so the early finish date is going to be 8. Then we have activity E, but this time it depends on two activities, which are A and B. A has early finish date of 5, and B has early finish date of 4. So which one do you think? we should consider as the early start date for E, 4 or 5. Give it a few seconds of thinking before answering. If your answer is 5, you are correct. And this actually makes sense, because we know that activity E depends on both A and B. So of course we need to consider the later date as our early start. So now we have the early start date of 5 and duration of 6, so the early finish would be 11. And activity F has early start date of 3 and duration of 4, so early finish of 7. Same way for activity G, it has early start of 8 and the duration of 9, so the early finish is 17. And we will do again the same method for activity H, like we did with activity E. Activity H depends on activity D, which finishes at 8, and depends on activity E, which finishes at 11, so the early start date of H will be 11, and it has duration of 7, 
so the end date would be 18. So this means that the total duration of the project is the latest date, which is 18. Now we want to calculate the critical path and the activity plot. In order to do that, we will go backward. So we will start by the end date of the project, which is 18, and let's check each activity. First, we have activity G. The early end date is 17, but we know that the project's early end date is 18, so this means that the activity could be delayed one day without actually affecting the project overall schedule. So this means that activity G late finish date will be 18 and the early start date will be 18 minus the duration of 9. So the float equals the difference between the early start and the late start, which is 1. The same way for activity H, but this time activity H ends at 18, which is the end date of the project. So this means that the late finish date is also 18 and the late start date is 11. So the float will be 0. Now let's look at activity F. It has an early finish date of 7 and the late finish date will be also 18. So the late start here is going to be 14 and the float is 11. Now let's look at activity D and this time we need to take care because there are two activities that depend on D this time, which are G and H. When we were going forward, and calculating the early start date and there was an activity that depends on two activities like E, we considered the latest finish date as our early start. Now we are going backward and we will do the opposite because now both G and H depend on D. And the late start date that doesn't affect the project for G is 9, while the late start date for H that doesn't affect the project is 11. This means that the late finish date for D cannot exceed 9, because if it did, it will affect activity G, which will affect the project's overall schedule. This means that the late finish date for D will be 9, and the float will be 1, while the late start date will be 6. And we will just keep doing the same with E, A, B, and C. So now we have the full schedule and its duration, and now we need to decide the critical path. And we know that the critical path is the path where all activities have zero float. So based on that, the critical path will be start, A, E, H, and finally end. And the total duration is 18. This might seem confusing a little in the beginning, but you just need to start practicing with the quiz of this chapter. And if you face any difficulties, you can always let me know in the questions under this video. So, this is the end of this chapter. Starting from next lecture, we will start learning some scheduling control techniques, such as crashing and fast tracking, and then we will learn cost control techniques, such as earned value analysis. So, this is it for our video today. See you in our next video. Thank you.